Even men at the top of their game find themselves wanting more from life, whether it's more meaning, unshakable confidence, a bigger impact, more money, deeper love, a hotter sex life, or a powerful legacy. Find out how good your life can be on this episode of Man Alive. Also, as I've supported men in their love and work lives for 15 years now, many men ask for the right words to say to be more successful, attractive, and desirable. But I found it's not so simple as giving scripts or lines because every man is different. So giving words or scripts would be like giving a tall, thin man a shorter, wider man's pants or vice versa. The words have to make sense for you and your personality, and there's so much happening beneath the surface that people are responding to. If you're interested in how to become a better lover and leader in your own unique way, go to shanajamescoaching.com slash quiz, or you can text ALIVE to 44144. It only takes a couple minutes and you'll start to get an idea of how you can be both more respected and desired. After you fill it out, we can schedule a time to review your quiz and talk about your specific challenges and desires. So again, go to either shanajamescoaching.com slash quiz or text ALIVE to 44144. That's A-L-I-V-E to 44144. Enjoy this episode of Man Alive. Hello, and welcome to this episode of Man Alive. I am excited to be here today to talk about embodiment. And embodiment is something that I work with all of my clients on, and it's often a very mysterious. It doesn't totally make sense at first, and a lot of men think of well, I exercise, so I'm embodied. And there's a very different way. There's a very different, you know, body consciousness that I love to bring to men as a support and and people as a support. And today's guest, Christopher Maher, has started and founded an organization called True Body Intelligence and works with people in the body, in the, you know, energetics and consciousness. And he's going to tell us a little bit more about that. And also has been a Navy SEAL. And so there's a different kind of embodiment that he's experienced uh, in this way. So we get to we get to hear from you about your journey and your distinctions of embodiment and why embodiment is so important and how men especially can cultivate it. So thank you so much for being here today. Hey, thank you for having me. Um here to serve and anything that I have to offer that's a benefit um, ask away. Great. So how do you describe embodiment? And if you want to weave in, you know, like we said, the, the distinction between your Navy SEAL journey embodiment versus what you do now, I want men to have a sense of like, what on earth, what on earth is this? I think for me, um, embodiment brought a lot of positive recognition because I was a good athlete. Mm -hmm. And so my sense of being in the body was running fast or gymnastics or Mm -hmm. swimming or wrestling or soccer. Like a kind of strength and skill. Yeah. Strength, speed, power. Yeah. uh, Performance. Yes. Right. Something that other people, something I could feel and other people could see and enjoy. Yeah. And that's a very limiting expression of embodiment. Mm -hmm. And eventually what happened for me is I took that too far. I took the pendulum way too far to the left. And I started to embody pain, Mm -hmm. discomfort, stiffness, tightness, restriction, constriction, And at the time when I was an athlete, nobody in the world really knew what knew what they were doing when it came to helping somebody become truly embodied Mm. as an an intelligent being physically, mentally, emotionally and spiritually. So the question for me was, how do I get out of this pain? And that was my driver. I think other people might have a different concept. They might have a different driver. Mm -hmm. My driver was really simple. I don't like to be in pain. Yeah. And things have to make sense to me. Yeah. If something doesn't make sense, 
it's very difficult for me to get my mind off of it, meaning that I was an embodied athlete Mm -hmm. with zero pain in my body. Mm -hmm. And then one day I woke up and I had pain in my body and the pain wouldn't go away. I just want to speak to that moment too, where you said to understand it, because my, my experience of embodiment is that I don't always get to understand it mentally, right? I think that's one of the blocks for many men to be embodied is there's that sense of I have to mentally understand it. So I'm really curious about how you brought those two together. So what I did is I prayed. I prayed and I prayed and I prayed because I had a goal at the time. My goal was to get to the Olympic trials Mm -hmm. and in track and field. And I was very frustrated because I was very devoted. I was very consistent. I was working hard. And instead of performing the way that I performed when I was really young, I was performing subpar relative to what I knew my potential to be. Mm -hmm. And that was frustrating. And the thing that was in the middle of that story from me being a younger athlete to me striving now towards making the Olympic trials Mm -hmm. was being a Navy SEAL and SEAL training. And SEAL training and being a Navy SEAL is a very different kind of embodiment. Mm -hmm. And the embodiment is about grinding it out and dealing with the discomfort mentally and emotionally in a way that no one can see you suffering underneath. Uh And so I was trained to hide my pain. Yeah. I was trained to hide my discomfort. I was trained to become one with my discomfort, with the cold, with, with the wet, with the lactic acid, with the tired muscles, with the physical exhaustion, with the mental exhaustion. Wow. And every week the demands got higher on the body. Yeah. And so that was a very different kind of embodiment. Yeah. And would you call that? I guess there it's a kind of embodiment. It almost feels like a denial though in certain ways. I mean, maybe not. You're learning. Yeah. Well, here's the thing is that you're so in your body that you there's there's no there's nowhere to hide got it like for instance if i go to the gym or i go to the track or i go to the swimming pool i can always sort of slack off yeah right yeah in seal training and the seal no teams there's no slacking off because guess what somebody can die right right so now life and death are on the line. So I've had a type of embodiment that's been under the pressure of perfection yeah. in terms of performance around the safety of my own life, but the safety of my teammates' lives and yeah. the safety of my classmates' lives. Yeah. And so that's a very different kind of experience that 99.99% of the public will never, ever I'll never know. have. Yeah. Okay. And so that kind of embodiment is a kind of embodiment that once it gets into your body, it's very difficult to get out mm-hmm. because it puts you in a state of hypervigilance. Yeah. Like you're always ready to go. You're always ready for the next moment. You're always on point. Yeah. Everything's organized. Everything's yeah. structured. And when I got out of the SEAL teams and SEAL training and I became a civilian, I was still living that kind of embodied lifestyle. Yeah. Okay. I run this tank to its edge every day. Every day. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm curious, I mean, if we had all the time in the world, I want to hear more about that. But also since you're saying like 99% of people, men, you know, won't experience that I'm curious how you took that to create true body intelligence, right? And and what you find that men are working with on a regular basis 
because I'm imagining that you took right your um th this lived experience that is the, an extreme and in more yeah. subtle ways I think men are probably dealing with these things as well yeah so what happened again was the pain yeah and because I've always strived for high goals and I like to execute when I couldn't execute, I had frustration yeah. and then I had agitation. Then I had tears. Yeah. Right. And I didn't cry in front of my teammates. I cried when I went home mm -hmm. and I couldn't understand. And I kept, you know, looking up towards heaven going, what's going on? Like, I can't work any harder. Like, give me a break. Like, show me what I need to know. Yeah. And then um, the pain, then I had a car accident. And so when I had, let's say my pain threshold was 75 out of 100, I could still train hard. But then I got in a car accident and the pain went into the very center of my hip wow. and I could never get away from it whether I was lying down, sitting, running, hopping, skipping, jumping, rolling, it was always throbbing. Yeah. And then I had to bend a knee. I had to reach out and I had to ask someone for help. And so I reached out to a buddy that I was in the SEAL teams with. And he gave me some help. He showed up at my house with a yoga mat and a juicer and said, look, these are some things that I think you could, you could benefit from. Wow. And, um, that was the start of all of that. <laughs> now, of course it took me 45 minutes to embody that juice. Yeah. He embodied that juice in like 90 seconds to two minutes. He's just like, <laughs> like it was the, the most delicious thing in the world where I was drinking it like, Oh my God, this is, uh. and then I realized I was toxic. Mm. Right. And I'm imagining that even men who are not in chronic pain or major pain, there's so much toxicity in our environment, oh, in our food yeah. and in our emotional sure. relationships, right? There's so yeah. much toxicity that men are and people are experiencing. And the toxicity that I was dealing with the most were my negative stress management tools were alcohol yeah. and sugar. Mm -hmm. like if it was if it was sweet i wanted it yeah and i drank with my buddies at night and when i was hungry and i wanted a snack i grabbed something sweet and so mm -hmm. i didn't have any idea i thought like i think all athletes think and all all military People. guys you know, think <laughs> you can just as long as you're working out you can eat whatever you want yeah and the truth is, yeah, you can because you're in charge. But at the end of the day, there's a cost. Right. Is it and actually no one good is above for your the cost. body? Mm -hmm. Right. And those are the things that I've learned. No one was good for the cost. No one gets away with, from the cost. So I had a realization that I needed to do something different mm -hmm. because what I was embodying was stress. Mm -hmm. And I was embodying toxicity yeah. at a rate that I could never recover from in a 24 hour period. Huh. And so my stress load was greater than my recovery load. Got it. Your body couldn't recover. It couldn't. So every day there was just a little more, a little more accumulation, a little more accumulation, a little more accumulation till it got to the point where I was like an old rusty lawnmower. Right, sitting in the back of your grandpa's garage. Yeah. <laughs> though the irony is on the outside, though, I look like Adonis, right? right? Yes. 1.8% body fat, you know, muscular, top to bottom. And, but underneath the hood, all the systems were busted up. Right. And I'm going to bring it back to, right, you know, normal men or just all men who didn't, don't look like Adonis, but. Right. There's still, again, we haven't learned how to take care of our body. And, and I know in true body intelligence, you talk about the physical, the mental, the spiritual, the emotional. So can you bring some of those pieces in too, to help men understand 
Okay. Yeah. Where like, did you go with embodiment? What I went, where I went with embodiment first was I started to remove the tension hmm. out of the physical body. And as I removed the tension out of the physical body, my thoughts changed. Mm, beautiful. The things that I was attracted to, they changed. The people that I wanted to be around, they changed. Even my penmanship changed. Wow. My sleep patterns changed. My movie choices changed. And so everything started shifting. And then once I stripped enough stress out of my body, emotionally, I started to mature very quickly. Mm. in ways that were remarkable. Yeah. I started to um, hold space for people as opposed to be the one who was making the jokes. I was the one listening. Mm. Instead of the one coming up with the ideas, I was the one taking instruction. And so... I was less of an initiating agent mm -hmm. and I was much more receptive to the ideas and the feelings and the thoughts and the experiences of those people around me. Wow. Okay. And now I was embodying emotional intelligence. Mm. Right. So I'm getting like your concept of, I think going into this, I was thinking, okay, what's the definition of embodiment that encompasses healthy embodiment, but you're talking about it more as a verb, right? We can embody everything from toxic to ultimate health. So it sounds like you have an understanding of embodiment of, oh, I can embody this or I can embody that, right? There's, there, are, there are choices here. Yeah, there's choices. And I became more kind. Mm -hmm. I became more patient. I became more open-minded. I became my orientation to time changed instead of having a fixed sense of time yeah. i had a more relative sense of time my orientation to food shifted dramatically i never picked up a nutrition book i literally removed tension from different parts of my body mm -hmm. and my attraction to old foods disappeared because when i went to the grocery store the first aisle i always went to was Snack the dessert aisle. aisle. Oh, the dessert aisle. Yeah, I was raised in Pennsylvania. In Pennsylvania, yeah. we have dessert for breakfast. Yeah. Lunch and dinner. It's like, hey, look, you work hard, you show up on time, you work hard, you get, get dessert. Sweets. Yeah. Okay. And suddenly one day I remember I was at the cash register and I thought, I didn't go to the snack aisle. Mm. That's interesting. And then the next day I didn't go, and the next day I didn't go, and the next day I didn't go, and the next day I didn't go. And, and this is suddenly, from releasing tension from your body. Tension, Can you talk more about that? Because I don't, I don't know that everybody understands. Okay, what does that actually mean? Yeah, what that means is this, is in your body, in everyone's body, mm -hmm. you have 16 channels of energy. Okay. Every one of these channels of energy is a specific form of intelligence. Mm. It's either high-functioning, or it's low functioning. Okay. So when the pancreas is overstressed and the stomach is overstressed, you want to have sweet because you find it difficult to communicate to your own benefit to those around you. Mm. And so then you cover up your inability because communication, clear communication, the taste of clear communication is sweetness. Interesting. Well, if I'm refusing or avoiding clear communication, You're I still need my sweetness. sweetness. So then I take it from the food instead of from the way that I'm being in my life. Wow. Are these 16 channels part of what you've created or yeah, these from 16 Chinese medicine? Channels, or? These 16 channels are a bridge off of, tr of traditional Chinese medicine. Okay. And then I've spent the last... 22 years adding massive amounts of data and information mm -hmm. in a in a practical sense. So I've been doing research about 100,000 hours in the last 22 years mm -hmm. of the impact of stress and tension and distortion on the body, the brain and the nervous system mm -hmm. and how to help every human become embodied so they no longer have to use negative stress management tools in order to feel okay.
Mm, yeah. Yeah. And I can imagine, I mean, I know from my own life of owning a business and being a single parent and all the, you know, the, and, and the toxicity of the world and the pandemic and the wars. And I mean, there's just so much to attempt to digest. And I think a lot of people, and I think men, especially veer toward shutting down, checking out, not even necessarily knowing that these bodily functions are not working as opposed yeah. to, you know, feeling it all. Well, it's easier for men to numb because men emotionally, their brains are seven times more sensitive, their emotional body than women's mm -hmm. because women's are, women are, how do we say this? Um, they're like superheroes emotionally mm. and men are like fragile children emotionally. Interesting. And so, so you're because men are more sensitive, men are more sensitive and because they're more sensitive, they're, they're more akin to numbing out from their emotions as opposed to feeling them mm. because their sensitivity is higher. Interesting. And how, and do so they don't know that? how to process yeah. those feelings and emotions in a constructive fashion yeah. where women have been taught the value of communication, right? They've been taught the value of openness. They've been taught the value of transparency. They've been taught the value of honesty. They've been taught the value of vulnerability and men have been taught, listen, put your chin to the grindstone and yeah. keep moving forward, no matter what's going on around you. And that's how they able to convince men to get into these foxholes in Germany mm -hmm. between the German and the French and to run across these fields oh where there are men, in these foxholes that are just shooting at them because yeah. they've been trained for thousands of years to numb out, to numb out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I get it. Yet we live in a different world now yeah. and men no longer have to suffer from having a life where they're underdeveloped yeah. and they lack the ability to coping. Isn't the right word. I, I, I don't want to cope. I actually want to meet the moment and be successful and experience what's in front of me. Yeah. But when I was younger, I did everything that I could to cope. Right. And meeting the moment, I mean, that's the question that's coming up for me is what is your sense of the modern day man and what is actually possible, right? Not the Adonis or the, my body is, you know, so strong, but I'm breaking down inside. But what is a, a strong embodied modern man to you? I think a strong um embodied modern man has the ability to communicate mm. what his desires wants and needs are effectively to his community yeah so his desires wants and needs can get met mm -hmm. but what that requires first is an investigation yes into what he desires and needs right and which is actually based this, in the body to some degree which is based in for sure 1000 yeah it's all based in your body and so for me, a man who has good posture, okay, has a body that's flexible and fluid, malleable, can adapt to the moment, but is unwilling to overadjust mm. to things that don't make sense to his ethics, his morals, his values, or his principles. Yeah. And he can maintain a strong presence where he can physically take action to make sure that his family is safe and to make sure that he feels confident to bring his genius ideas into the world and make them become manifest and to have a deeply aligned connection to God in his own unique way. That's step that's a step above religion mm -hmm. and is in alignment with how he feels and thinks about reality yet he can simultaneously respect the positions and the desires and the circumstances of those around him, even when they're different. And he can manage um, holding a honest, vulnerable, transparent space around his needs. Hmm. 
I and love the in- embodiment that you brought in, right? Desires and needs and relationship to others. And so embodiment is much broader from what you're saying than Yeah, because yeah, I've because when, when 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 I look at men today, I see men filling up everyone else else's cup first. Yeah. And then getting a couple crumbs at the end. Yeah. And for me, the world's going to be a better place when men fill up their cup first and they give from excess rather than deficiency. Yeah. Yeah. I do see that, especially men who identify as nice guys or people pleasers, right? There's a trying to, like you said, fill others' cups. And I think filling your own cup can still be connected and collaborative. It doesn't have to be selfish and isolated and scarce, right? There can be this. Yeah open, um, you know, permeability between people. Yeah. I mean, for men, I think they have to have practice. They have to have some structure, right? Mm -hmm. Some commitment to their body, some commitment to developing their energy, Mm -hmm. some, some attention and focus on the foods that they're eating, Mm -hmm. uh, some attention and focus on recovery, like, Look, man, if you're going to bed at night, sleeping next to your wife, and you feel exhausted when you wake up in the morning, look her in the face at breakfast and tell her, I'm sleeping on the couch until I feel my energy come back. Mm. This isn't personal. Yeah, I can't tell you how many men that I've worked with over the last 22 years that are like, I'm so exhausted every single morning. And I'm like, dude, you got to get your own room. Uh, okay. Can you talk like, about that? Like, how does a man know? I guess the exhaustion is key. I don't know if a lot of men would know how to get their energy back or. Okay. It's really simple. Like for men, in order to get their energy back, they need to have like three or four nights where they sleep by themselves. Hmm. And that means, look, if, if you got to have like a cot in your garage or some tiny little space in your house, even if there's not a lot of room, you got to make like a little cave where you can go in there and get some good rest. And what is it about? Cause I can, I can relate to that. I definitely need some time sleeping alone. I don't, you know, my energy, I do feel like kind of travels if somebody else is in the bed and, you know, it's focused on them. Like, what is it for you about that in particular? What it's about for me is that when you're sleeping next to another human, Mm -hmm. And what you and your path is one of mastery. Then what happens is the other person's energy, wherever they're deficient, through the concept a concept called transference, mm-hmm. they're going to start taking your energy. So wherever the lowest common denominator of energy is in the room, is, your that person gets drained the most. Energy will flow. Uh huh. That person will get. That drained. person the, gets drained the most. The person with okay? more energy will get drained. The person right? with more energy gets drained the most. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So then you're you're someone else's battery pack, and guess what? Your woman doesn't recover either. Right. Or regardless of what kind of relationship you're in, whether you're in a same sex marriage or. Uh, even if you're in a monogamous relationship or you're in a a polygamous relationship, you know, you've got to get time to sleep by yourself. And when you get that, you're going to feel good. Mm -hmm. This is why people go on vacation, right? And they come back from vacation and, and they look exhausted because they've been cramped in these tiny little hotel rooms. Interesting. With other people. Everyone's on top of them. And they don't have enough space. And the man feels the need to protect the entire time. So he never has a moment off to take care of himself. And I just think it's a good idea for men to get up in the morning, get up before everyone else's is up in your family and spend a good half hour to 45 minutes devoted to yourself. Look, some people, their thing is meditation. Get up, meditate. Mm -hmm. Some people, their thing is cold plunging cold plunge some people their thing is running whatever your thing is is. Mm -hmm. get up and get it done before everyone else gets up that's a kind of filling your own cup that's right so you fill up your own cup and then the rest of the day you're giving from excess rather than deficiency and at the end of the night you don't have to resent the good people in your life because you didn't get your needs met right and anytime there is resentment i think there is a 
you know, either a denial of your own needs or, okay, I'm not asking for what I want. Cause I don't think that I'm, you know, I'm valuable in that way or like that I deserve something. So again, I'm just really appreciating how the concept of embodiment, true body intelligence actually brings in all of these levels. Do you have, um, principles. I mean, again, we could, we could talk about this for hours, but because we have a short conversation today, are there any principles of true body intelligence that you want to relate to our listeners? Hmm. Okay. This is very simple. Whatever's in your body is in your life. And what that means is this, every single ache, every single headache, every single um, um, how do we say it for men? What do men get? Neck aches, uh, shoulder pain, all these things that are going in your body, yeah. going on in your body that are symptoms, they're happening because there's something else going on in your life that's not working out for you. Mm. And whatever's going on in your life that's not working out for you, it's going to eventually show up in your body as pain. Hmm. And if you're already in pain, it's because you're living a life that's different and counter to who it is you actually are. And you can only ride that train to so many stations Hmm. before you end up with a chronic disease. So you're not, would you say you're not in pain anymore? Not no. no. <laughs> I, I mean, once I got into this and I put my time and energy and effort in, I was out I of pain. Out. Wow. I, and, and I got out of the pain quickly. And that's the fascinating part of the story. See, once I got out of the discomfort, mm-hmm. I started seeing so much of the way that I was relating to the world around me and allowing the world around me to relate to me. Mm-hmm. When I saw those changes, those were the things that were inspiring me to be more embodied, wow. not to look like Adonis or not to be more flexible or, or none of those silly motivators for me. The motivator was I can be a better person. Mm, beautiful. I can be more consistent. I can be more present. I can be more loving. I can be more kind. I can be more generous. Mm -hmm. And it's all worked out because of that. Wow. Amazing. All right. As we're wrapping up, what else do you want men to know? What feels important? You have a right to thrive emotionally. That's what men need to know. They have a right to thrive emotionally. What does that mean? When you look at the emotional world, we're talking about feelings of hope, feelings of passion, feelings of intimacy, feelings of freedom, um, the ability to breathe through your stress, the ability to discover what your desires, your wants, and your true needs are, and to be able to take heartfelt action to your own benefit. It's important. Like men aren't here to be support systems to women. Mm. That is not your end all be all. You're here to explore this world around you and figure out what it is you really want from life. And you get to have all those other things too. But if you wake up one morning and you're like, I feel like I need to go on a backpacking trip to Europe six weeks and go on a spiritual journey. I hope you feel comfortable enough going to your wife and go, look, babe, I'm sorry. I've decided to quit my job and I'm going on a six week hiatus. I don't know where I'm going, but I'm not doing what we're doing the way we were doing it because this this isn't me any longer. Yeah. Like I want men to find the courage to stand up and do what it is and be who it is they came here to be. Yeah. And I, I would imagine, but you can tell me that there are, you know, many different ways, right? It's not always quitting your job. It's not always a six week journey. Sometimes there can be different yeah, steps, sure. different ways. It but... could be a three, it could be a, a three day weekend. It right. could be like, I'm going to watch, 
you know, I I I want to go to see this race at Daytona 500. Right. And I want to go by myself. Do I don't want you to come with me. I don't want yeah. the kids. Um, I need to go be by myself yep. and do this by myself. Yeah. Whatever it is that you feel you need, you have the courage to speak up. Yeah. Maybe it happens. Maybe it won't. But at least you spoke up for yourself. You communicated clearly. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's the beginning of the path, right? Once you can speak up for yourself, then you can start to collaborate and create with other people and see what would be a win-win here as opposed to just yeah. settling or, um, you know, making the, the feeling of, um, that energy lack, right. Or that feeling drained, yeah. just making that like, Oh, this is just what life is. This is how it has to be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank I'm you here so to much. get the crumbs. Yeah. Yeah. No more crumbs. No more crumbs. The cake the cake your own the, slice the it's okay. um, the non-sugar right or like the healthy yes the, <laughs> the coconut sweet <laughs> coconut sugar sweetened or date sugar sweetened yeah preferably the real cake the real yeah the real cake i love yeah. it thank you so much for being here and again i think we could continue this conversation for a long time so maybe <laughs> yes, another part could. of it um how can men and people find more of you i mean they can go to truebodyintelligence.com Great. That's the easiest way. Uh, I wrote a book called Free for Life. Mm. They could go to Amazon or they could go to my website and order the book Great. and start to get a real basic education around the stress that they, have ne- that they haven't dealt with, the generational, the familial stress, those patternings and create some pattern interrupts yeah. that help them get more free. Um I think those are the two easiest ways. Awesome. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. I'm so glad you joined us for today's episode of Man Alive. I hope you enjoyed our conversation and it gave you something to consider and explore in your life. If you like what you heard, I'd be so grateful for you to subscribe and write a quick review that helps men like you find us. And again, head over to shanajamescoaching.com slash quiz or text the word alive, A-L-I-V-E, to 44144 to get a sense of how you can become a better lover and leader. You'll start to see how you can be both more respected and desired in your unique and genuine way. If you don't feel as confident or as excited about life or love as you'd like to be, this quiz is a really great starting point and will guide you toward a more passionate love life and a more inspiring and successful career. So again, text ALIVE, A-L-I-V-E, to 44144 or head over to shanajamescoaching.com slash quiz. Join us each week for a new episode of Man Alive.